This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 18, and it reads, Lift up thine eyes round about. Behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, Yehovah Shai, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an ornament, and bind them on thee as a bride doth. And it's talking about our land receiving <clears throat> the elect, all right, that colony of the Lord's people the holy people, the children of Israel, the first fruits being gathered back into the land because our Lord is going to bring us back into the land, make us one with himself and with his son and one with our land. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 49, verse 18, NLT. Look around you and see, for all your children will come back to you. As surely as I live, says the Lord, Yahweh, they will be like jewels or bridal ornaments for you to display. So we're going to be displayed in our land as the people of that land, as the people of the Lord, as the holy and chosen seed of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. The Lord's willing. This is a, an edifying lesson. Just the second part of prepare ye the way for the Lord as a door, uh, as a bride adorned for her husband. So prepare ye the way for the Lord as a bride adorned for her husband. Part two. Lord's willing is edifying. Let me get another scripture with bride in it. Here we go. Bam. And then uh, and we're going to jump right into this lesson. All right. <clears throat> this is uh, Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Yahweh, my soul shall be joyful in my God. For he have clothed me with the garments of salvation. He have covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bride. Groom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. One more scripture. Isaiah 62 and 5. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. Woo! And as a bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. So with that, Lord's willing, <laughs> this is an edifying lesson. Enjoy the clip. <laughs> I was like that part, the music and everything, man, it put you in the spirit. Imagine what we're going to be hearing when we enter into the chariot. They say we're going to be singing the songs of Moses and that of the Lamb. Woo! Imagine that. And the angel's going to be, man, <laughs> be singing. We're going to be singing. Barakata Yahweh Shema Shah. We're going to be praising the Lord. The, the remnant shall be affrighted, but we're going to give glory unto Yahweh Shema Shai. And what I just mentioned, if you're a newcomer and you just stumbled across this video, I mentioned the name of our father, the heavenly father, the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only God, the only power, the almighty, in whom he himself created all things through his only begotten son. I said his name and his son's name, the proper and true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, our language, the Lashwan Kodash, which means holy tongue, Lashwan meaning tongue and Kodash meaning holy. Now, these be the names that are written, given double honors unto my apostles and elders that taught us these things. My apostles and elders are great millstone that are worthy of double honors, as it is written, that continue in the ministry. That taught me and brothers like me and you believers this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with those beautiful, majestic, holy, fearful, reverent, and powerful names. And through those names, all things consist. Double honors unto my apostles and elders at Great Millstone once again for what they have done, given us this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and his anointed. Now, these are the two most important things you will ever know, the name of the Heavenly Father and the name of his only begotten Son. Okay? In our language, the Hebrew, the same names that were called upon of our fathers of old beforehand. The same power that flooded the earth, the same power that delivered us from Egypt, 
The same power that uh, split up the tongues after the Tower of Babel. The same power that destroyed Pharaoh and his army in the sea. The same power that led us through the wilderness. The same power that sent 10 deadly plagues on Egypt, incurable plagues. The same power that shall deliver us from New Babylon, America, and all the lands we've been scattered. The same power that loved us so much so that he sent his only begotten son, our savior, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, to be propitiation for us and atonement for our sins. And so that we may be made one in him through his son, one in them, as Yahweh Shai's prayer states. Now, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah meaning he, Hawa meaning exists or is or is to be. He is, he exists, he, the existing one, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son that has a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite men first and also to the believers consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith. Even that mighty name, that glorious name, even the name of Yahawashai. Yah, meaning he, Yahawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. And that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force. For we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him, to fashion a body alike unto his glorious body. All right. So Lord's willing. Is an edifying lesson, a part two. Let's get right into it. I'm going to throw uh, uh, some atonement in there. Day of atonement, you already know. It just happened to fall on this day, so hey, I'm going to include hey, what I can through the Spirit. Barakatai Yahweh Bashim Hey, pretty much every day leading to the day of our Lord's return should be uh, an atonement. We should get closer and closer unto our power. We should get closer and closer unto our God. We should do things more pleasing unto Him. Uh, uh, seeing it that, seeing it. Seeing that it was in our mind, as the scriptures say, uh, to go away from the Lord, now being returned to him, seek him 10 times more. Let me get that real quick in Baruch. I don't want to butcher it. All right, no, I did. But um, let's get it. Baruch 4 and 10. Uh, t -t 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 was that it? Or was it 5 and 10? What is that? Bear with me, brothers. 10 times more. Let me get that 10 times more. Noah's in Baruch, though. Ten, 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 come on. There we go. Baruch, four and twenty-eight. For as it, for as it was your your mind to go astray from Yahweh, by Shemal Shai, so being returned through the blood of Mashiach, have we been returned? Unto the Lord, beginning with the hopeful elect, that house of David, the household of faith. Seek him ten times more, ten going into perfection. So we must seek him in our perfection. Every day really is an atonement that we're making to our Lord to be closer unto him. For Yahweh Shai was a propitiation for us. All right, he was the appeasing of the wrath of our power. So keeping these days, it makes us closer unto our God to give him glory and praise and honor. Okay, Barakatai Yahweh Bashim Shai. Let's get up out of there. Let's go to um, back to the bride. Let's go to going to the Apocrypha. I believe it's in Idris. Yep, or Second Ezra. Yep, there it is. Second Ezra seven and twenty. Uh, I'll start at twenty-five. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are full things. So we're, we're, we're promised full things, unspeakable things, marvelous things. And Yahweh Bashim Shai, just as a bride, as a, a married to her husband, hey, especially in our culture, you, uh, your, your daughter or your sister or the women in your family are already or are always married to a noble house for the most part. You know, we're a noble people. We're royal people. We are a regal people. So we are being married unto our God that's going to give us everything. Hey, seeing that we would stray from him, believing in these idols and these gods that are no gods, let us be returned unto our power to receive everything. Only after we atone, 
Only after we are brokenhearted and contrite will the Lord not despise that, that sacrifice. Now this is 2nd Edges 7 and 26. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens, signs, which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear, and she coming forth shall be seen, that's the elect, that now is withdrawn from the earth. For a long time we were uh, down and out. For a long time Israel was lost. For a long time we didn't know who we were. For a long time we were dead in trespasses and sins. For a long time we were withdrawn from the earth. All right? Going into that falling away. But through the spirit and power of the Lord entering into his servant, even Elijah the prophet, who was John the Baptist when the Lord came on the scene, and who came back in our time as Abba Bivens, whom we believe, if you can receive it, he returned the fathers unto the children and the children unto their fathers. And we are returned back unto our power, knowing his true name, Yahweh, the name of the heavenly father. And Yahweh Shai, the name of the only begotten son. All right. Now let's keep reading. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. We're going to see the wonders of the Lord in this time. For my son, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed with those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Because Ezra was on the scene about 500 to 400 years before the Lord, Yahweh Shai, was born into the world during the Roman era. Ezra was during the, uh, the Persian and Mede, Medial era. Okay? When the Medes and the Persians were in rule, so to speak. All right? So those that were with Yahweh Shai in the past shall be with Yahweh Shai again. All right, beginning with the 12, beginning with Peter, who is King David, the rest of the 12 and the 144,000, the believers, those that believed in the Lord when he came on the scene, that saw a great light in the darkness. And now we see that light again. All right. And we will be brought back unto the Lord again. All right. So after these years shall my son Mashiach die, which the Lord died on the cross. He was our atonement. All right. And all men that have life, we had true life. The Lord was life. He was the life of man. And we all die with him. Our sins were nailed to his cross. Okay? So we die with the Lord. But we shall also reign with him and be risen with him. All right? Let's see here anymore. Scriptures. Dang. There we go. There we go. This is the one I brought out in the previous lesson, but let's bring it out again. Revelation 21 and 2, and I, John, this is John the Revelator, the beloved of Yahweh Shai, his friend, all right, Yahweh Shai's favorite, among the 12, and I, John, which is John the Revelator, and I, John the Baptist, John the Revelator, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, which is the people before its place coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. There you go. Barakatha Yahweh by Shema Shai. Let's go there real quick. We're going to get a few words. Okay. And the world, this is a second edge of seven and 30 and the world shall be turned into the old silent seven days. See, everything went into darkness after this time. You know, the, the men that had the truth, had the gospel, had the, uh, the apostles doctrine, which was the doctrine of Mashiach. They all eventually died. Okay. And then we came into this, this dark time after the middle ages where Jake was ruling Esau came back into power and deceived the nations. And now it is a time of darkness. But the light is now shining again through this word, through this truth. All right. And the age of Esau is coming to an end and the age of Jacob shall begin. It says, and the world shall be turned into the old silent seven days, completion, completion of time. Because the falling away came in our nation. We forgot who we were. That's why I said the bride was withdrawn from the earth. It says, like as in the form of judgments, so that no man shall remain. And after seven days, the world that yet awaketh not shall be raised up and that shall die that is corrupt esau edom his world his system is going to die that is corrupt all right and that's what it's going to be all right and the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her hey we were dead in trespasses and sins we were asleep we are risen we're hey, that valley written in ezekiel the valley of the dead bones the lord said he's going to raise us up all right and we're going to be standing as an exceeding great army and even in Revelation, it said that after three days and a half, the spirit of, of Yahweh by Shema Shai entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon those that beheld them. There you go. 
and the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her, and so shall the dust those that dwell in silence. And the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment wherein that time and misery shall pass away, and the long suffering shall have an end. <whistles> but judgment only shall remain. Truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. <whistles> wherein that time, and the work shall follow, and the reward shall be showed, and the good deeds shall be of a force, and wicked deeds shall bear no rule. <whistles> and that's what time we're at, a time of rewards. All right. The work shall follow. We're, in the, we're doing the work of the Lord. The good deed shall be of a force. All right. And the wicked deed shall bear no rule. All right. So we're at a changing of worlds. Barakatha Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. All right. We're going to jump right into these, uh, these scriptures here. Now, this is the book of Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men. His men, the men of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And Yahweh himself, by Shem Yahweh Shai, shall be with them, and be their power. <whistles> and Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death in Israel, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For for the former things... Are passed away. <whistles> Atonement. All right, let's get there. Propitiation. All right, let's get it. Uh, it actually was in there. Ooh, okay. Man. Wisdom of Solomon 18 21. For then the blameless man made haste and stood forth to defend them. This is talking about Moses. But now we have an even greater high priest, which is Yahweh Shai. It said, it said if uh, in the two or three witnesses um, under Moses' law, uh, you was put down, how much more? Hey, let me get that. Let me get that real quick. Moses' law. Okay. Okay. That's yes, in Hebrews. Yep. Man, there we go. Hebrews 10, 28. It's all good right here. Verse 27, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which is righteous anger, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. And have done despite unto the spirit of grace. As many men that are out here, even those proclaiming to be Israel, they have done that. They trod it underfoot the son of the heavenly father. But they're nothing. And Yahweh is going to destroy them. All right. Let's read it in the NLT. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the son of God. And have treated the blood of the covenant, which made us holy, as if it were common and unholy. And have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings Yahweh's mercy to us. Verse 30. For we know him that have said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord, Yahweh Bashimah shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, we've seen that great light. Ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, because we're afflicting our souls. And partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. Knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. <whistles> Man, it just goes on. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patient suffering, that after ye have done the will of Yahweh, ye might receive the promise. Woo -hoo -hoo. NLT, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue. 
to do Yahweh's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Woo! Verse 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, Yahweh Shai, and will not tarry. Woo! <laughs> you got to do the Essence magazine. <laughs> I like you. Well, let me go to Essence real quick. In the essence of all that we are is of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The hell with some weak ass magazine. Death to you sellouts, man, straight up. We're entering into that bed chamber with the Lord right now. We're doing things well, pleasing unto him. Just like a woman uh, getting ready for a marriage, uh, as it is recorded in the book of Esther, or Hadassah, her true Hebrew name, Hadassah, which means myrtle, myrtle tree, all right, or myrtle, all right, which has very uh, good benefits, you know, myrtle. If you go into that, it has so many benefits. But, um, just as the women of old would bathe themselves in oils and be presentable for the king or lord that they would marry or husband that they would be uh, betrothed to. We're doing the same thing in this day of atonement, in these high holy days, in our time, in our efforts. We're doing that which is well pleasing unto Yahweh Bashim Asha, which is our reasonable service. It says essence. It says being essence or being essence. See, our whole being is to Yahweh Bashim All right, let's get it. Essence. The choices are most essential or most vital part of some idea or experience. Woo! This is the most vital part of this day is knowing that our all, our reason of being is of Yahweh Bashim Shai and none else. We don't want the glory of men. For if we were to obey men, we would not be the servants of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Says any substance possessing to a high degree the predominant properties of a plant or drug, or uh, or other natural products from which it is extracted. So the Lord have ex extracted His elect from the world to be His, and we have withdrawn ourselves from the world this day to give glory and honor, and supplication, and mourning. And affliction of our soul to Yahweh Bashim Shai alone. None else. Okay, it says a, a synonym says a kernel, substance, woo, a core, our very core is, is geared towards Yahweh Bashim Shai. He's our very center, our center. He's our heart. Our inwardness is toward Yahweh Bashim Shai. Our bones and marrow are made strong through his word. His meat, our, our, our meat is to do, woo, hoo, hoo, is to do the will of Yahweh Shai, man. Our sum, we get down to the nitty gritty. Everything about us is Yahweh Shai, man. So is there any substance possessing a high degree, the predominant properties of a plant or drug or other natural products which is extracted? It says essence, the central meaning or theme of a speech or literary work. Essence. It says a uh, a toilet tree that emits and diffuses a fragrant odor. So, Lord's willing, we're a sweet savor unto our our God. But yeah, you got a nigga on Essence magazine, you know, thinking he's he's great. You ain't nothing, demon. All right, and a indefinite destruction to all you that know not the will of Yahweh Bashim Shai and his fear. Shoot, I even give it to Sakar. They know that is the Day of Atonement. Hey, kudos to you for that. Praise you the Lord. Praise our power. All right. Uh, 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 how's the scripture go? Um, uh, 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 hey, how's the scripture go? Uh, hey, how's it go? Pretty much give glory unto our Lord. Hey, how's it go? I forget the word. There's a key word I can't think of. Uh, uh, proclaim. I think it's publish. Proclaim something. Let me get it. Before I get propitiation, let me get published real quick. I believe that is it. Oh, uh, uh, um, hang is it subscribe? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, subscribe, subscribe. There we go. There we go. There we go. Woo, there it is. Deuteronomy 32 and 3. Because I will publish the name of Yahweh by Shimei Oshai. Ascribe ye greatness unto our power. So all of you that are keeping this day, hey, ascribe ye greatness unto our power.
publish the name of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Call upon his name. All right? And you will see the power thereof. All right? We ain't, we ain't ascribing nothing to uh, uh, no clown. And Salagi, I'm kind of going off track, but let me get something real quick. Um, uh, take me away. Take me away. I believe that's in Job. We ain't ascribing no glory and no honor to no man that ain't worthy of it. See, we give double honors unto our apostles because they're, they're worthy of that. Not to just some clown that think he know the Lord and he don't know a damn thing. All right? <laughs> now I'm getting mad, so I like it. All right? Quickly take me away. Yep, it's in uh, Job, so I like it. On phone, all right. Flattering title. There we go. Flattering. I think flattering has two T's in it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Woo. Job 32 and 21. Let me not, I pray. You accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man. <whistles> for I know, this is Job 32 and 22. For I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. Woo! That's it. Woo, man. That's it, man. Call all you lie, y'all. Let's get propitiation. Just wanted to get that real quick. All right, because there's certain people in the congregation that's giving all this honor to some weak ass man, but you ain't giving glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Ashai. You're not even giving glory and honor unto him because you don't even call him upon his true name, his proper name. You don't call him by his proper name. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, not God. It's just a title. And his son's name is not Jesus Christ, it is Yahweh Shai. And his true title is Hamashiach, which means the anointed. Ha the Mashiach anointed. So call upon their true and proper names. Give glory and honor unto them. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. So I'll give uh, honor where honor is due, credit where credit is due. I'll give it to uh, Sakari, man. They know it's a day of atonement. They're afflicting their souls. And all you true believers are afflicting your souls. All right? Now this is Romans 3 and 25. And it reads, Whom Yahweh have set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Yahweh. So the Lord set his son forth as a propitiation, an atonement. All right. Woo. First John two and two. And he is a propitiation for our sins. Yahweh Shai. And not for ours only, the elect, but also for the sins of the whole world, the rest of Israel, whether they get it on this side or not. The Lord, you know, cleansed all the nation. Ultimately, but at this time, the faithful of the land shall the Lord look to and shall the Lord save in this time. All right, because we have denied ourselves, we have afflicted our souls and we yet afflict our souls. For him, even knowing that Yahweh Shai is the atonement, but we still rehearse the righteous acts. We still give homage to Yahweh Bashim Shai. He gave up his body, did he not, for us? So we will suffer and afflict our bodies for him. So there you go. This is 1 John 4 and 10. Herein is love. Not that we loved Yahweh, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Woo! So how are you going to show love back to the Father who is in the spirit? By afflicting our souls, giving our all to him. He is our essence. He is our meat, our core. And let me get that. Uh, our meat is to do the will of him, our meat. You know, my meat. That's what Yahweh Shai said is to do the will of him that sent me. While he was in the flesh, Yahweh Shai did his, uh, the, the father's will. This is John 4 and 34. Yahweh Shai saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. For my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. So we're eating off the Lord right now. We hungered and thirsted for righteousness. 
And we are being filled at this time. Barakatai Yahweh Bashim Ashai. Barakatai Yahweh Bashim Ashai. The water Yahweh Bashim Ashai. And let me keep reading this Hebrews. Hebrews 10 and 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come, Yahweh Shai, will come and will not tarry, will not delay. Verse 38. Now the just shall live woo, by faith. Is not the just living by faith this day? We have withheld ourselves from food and from drink to afflict our souls. Right? And we're living by what? Faith. That in doing so and keeping this high holy day and giving ourselves holy unto Yahweh Bashim Ashai that he will reward us and that he will see fit to save us and redeem us and to deliver us from our enemies and from oppression and from the, the chains, these chains of darkness, even these bodies, this flesh, wherein dwelleth no good thing. But the life that we now live, we live through the son of the heavenly father. Let me get that nailed to his cross. To his cross. Then we're going to get back into the bride, you know, his cross. But this is all culminates. We're doing things that are well pleasing unto the Lord. We know that the Lord is going to marry us, but we need to make ourselves presentable. It's just like a man in the ancient world, he'd probably get himself a wife, but she was not yet mature. You know, this woman might have been uh, betrothed to the man at birth, and then she's coming into the years of the flower of her age, but yet the man is looking at her like she's still not ready. Let her mature a few more years. So all these years leading up to the coming of our Lord is, is as our maturity. We're maturing. We're, we're getting to the Lord's liking. OK, keeping these uh, high holy days. That's us. That is us maturing for the Lord. That's us putting on our, our jewels. Us putting on the oil, being bathed in the oil. Being being fragranted and and, and 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 succulent for the Lord to his liking, to his taste. All right. We're not like the ugly ass Christians, you pagans doing whatever the hell you want to do. The Lord ain't looking at you and you other clowns that claim to be Israel. You're not doing that, which is what pleasing unto the Lord. You're doing your own goddamn thing. You're like a goddamn feminist that uh, might marry a dude, but keeps her own goddamn last name. Like, no, you're supposed to take on his name. He owns you. You belong to him. But no, a lot of you other camps, you you belong to this world. You belong to the streets. You ain't for the Lord. But I'm going to get off of you clowns for now. All right. May the Lord destroy you lest you repent. But those among your ranks that are of the elect, they will break away from that madness and do that which is well pleasing unto the Lord. It's Colossians 2 and 14 blotting out. The handwriting of ordinances that was against us, the uh, the first covenant, which it was to the letter of the law. You, you broke one, you broke them all, and you, hey, death, you know, was staring you in the face. But through Mashiach, he made a better way. Though encompassing those same laws and those beautiful ordinances, but yet based on better promises through him, woo, through his blood. It says, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Woo! Man. See it? Colossians 1 and 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. See, that's what the Lord did for us. And you, that was sometimes alienated, and were enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If, woo, that is, is the if, woo, I love that if, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, the good news, which ye have heard. And which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven. That was uh, those of you that have been reborn, born again. Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. And just like Paul, we were made ministers. Our apostles, our elders, myself, brothers, have been made ministers, servants to you sheep out there that are eating of this great and wonderful food. It says, which now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Mashiach in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, the, uh, the body of believers. 
Okay? <whistles> Man, beautiful. I'm going to keep reading this Hebrews, but bear with me. All right, I'm back, Akim. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, a lot of you camps, a lot of you fallouts, are people that don't give a damn, two-thirds, knowing damn well you know what this thing is about. You know what to do. You know where to go. You know where to look. You know what to search. You have drawn back. The Lord ain't going to have no pleasure in you, and he's going to take pleasure in destroying you. It says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Woo! We are not of them who draw back unto perdition, destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. All right. So let's go to uh, Revelation on into the bride. Yep, there we go. We're going to get the word uh, adorned. I know we got prepared in the last uh, lesson. We're going to get adorned in this one. Bear with me, brothers. Got to bear with that blue letter. All right, this goes also into the virgins, the wise virgins and the foolish. The wise trim their lands, which means they prepared. They got ready. You know? They they decked themselves out. They You know? Come on now. Let's go to um, adorned. And the word there is cosmeo. Cosmeo. It says to put in order, arrange, make ready, prepare, to ornament, adorn, metaphorically, to embellish with honor, gain honor. So through Yahweh Bashim we gain honor, we embellish the honor. Let me get that uh, honor and eternal life. That's right. So honor the king, love the brotherhood. Let me get that. And it's funny how this woman in the in the, the clip, her name is Elizabeth, and uh, which means uh, God is my oath, or my oath is to God, right? Um, we're that woman marrying the king, but we love the king, we love the brotherhood. See, because in this movie, if you if you watch it, Outlaw King, his brothers, you know, had to go to war against England because England was going against uh, Ireland and Scotland at this time. So pretty much it was Judah versus Benjamin, all right? And Levi was sprinkled up in there. But um, it goes to show you that Judah was doing wicked things, certain wicked things. And uh, uh, Benjamin felt wronged and they were like, hey, we got to go to war with these guys. But in the clip, um, he had married this this woman, Elizabeth. Right. And um, he was in at the council table with his brothers because his father had just died. And his father said, please don't um, you know, wage war. But he said, but when we waged war against the king of England, he said, I don't know why we ever gave up. And then uh, that was like the last thing he said. And he cried a little bit and then he died. And, um, you know, my man, uh, Robert the Bruce, was there to witness his, his death. And he, he told his brothers to come together and said, brothers, I know you don't want this, but um, we might have to go to war. Uh, uh, fly the banner and the flag that we're going to war against England. Right. And uh, uh, old girl was there. She said, I want to be a part of uh, this discussion. And he says, please, for me, my lady. This is between me and my brothers. You know, uh, uh, withdraw yourself. Go to your chamber and we'll, we'll discuss this later. And she was kind of mad a little bit, but she understood like, yeah, this, this is not no no place for me. This is the king and his brethren. But she had love for the brotherhood and the king. You see that? That's the spirit. Now let's get that in the uh, New Testament. Boom. All right. Let's go. Maybe there's a U up in there. You know, sometimes that old English is, is different. There we go. All right. Where we at now? Romans, let's go to Romans. Romans 12 and 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. That's it. That's what we do. All right. This is Romans 13, 7. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. You see that? So this is a custom of ours. We're giving homage to our Lord. All right. But yet, but yet niggas is giving honor and glory 
and homage to uh, Esau Edom. And he ain't worthy of nothing. But you giving his him custom and due and tribute. But we're giving uh, tribute, fear, and honor unto Yahweh Bashem All right. It says, uh, it's going down. I believe that was it in the moments. Uh, let's get it. There we go. I just go a little bit up. This is Romans 2 and 7. To them who by patient, which it goes into suffering, continuance, and well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. See that? The honor is in there. And they said in uh, metaphorically, the cosmeo, which is uh, to adorn, says to embellish with honor, to gain and gain honor. See that? Trim. And then you got the word trim, garnish. And it goes into the wise versions that trim their lamps. You see that? Everything is falling into place. It's Romans 2 and 10. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worked good. To the Jew first, those that know the customs, that knew the customs back then. All right, there was honor unto them. And also to the Gentile, those that were coming out of the Gentile state of mind that were indeed through bloodline Israelites. That connected their lineage back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the patriarchs. And that's us. We're those Gentiles. But hey, it says, but glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good. So you're working good this day. And to those of you that are not working good this day, death and destruction unto you. Because you know, the Lord already winked at your ignorances. And now is not time to play. The Lord is not uh, uh, going to let you go uh, guiltless. He's going to hold your ass accountable straight up. So for you, you brothers out there, you sisters holding it down, a hey, blessings and peace unto you. All right. So uh, that's that word. Oh, let's get this word embellished in the, uh, in the online etymon. So the Lord's going to embellish us with honor. Embellish. It's like. The word there, embellish, is a verb, which is an action. This is what the Lord is going to actually do to render beautiful. Ooh, hoo, hoo. The Lord is going to beautify us with honor. Ooh. Make beautiful. Ornament. Man, pretty, pretty uh, handsome. Pretty. Fine. To dress up. But you got niggas dressing up on essence and shit. But yet, we looking way better than you. Uh, like the Apostle Tar said, I don't, I don't need a, a mother effing thing. I'm good. We are good. We're good with Yahweh Shemashah. He's going to beautify us. He's going to make us great. He's going to make us to shine in this world and in the world to come. We don't need Esau to help us out. We don't need a weak ass magazine. We don't need none of that crap. All right. Whereas that wife being adorned for her husband, we're getting ready for the marriage. All right. And this is the word embellished. It says uh, the embroidered pad, uh, aggrandize, aggrandize, blow up. Say, we, we, we're blowing up. You know how Jay say, we blowing up. And hey, we're really blowing up in the spirit. All right? It says, the deck, adorn, decorate, grace, beautify. Be beautiful to look at. Ooh. Is this truth that's attractive, not us. But we're being made attractive because we're putting it on. Put on as the elect. It says, make more attractive by adding ornament, color, etc. All right? Ooh. To make more beautiful. Barakatha Yahabah Shema Shai, man. Barakatha Yahabah Shema Shai. What are y'all about my shot? All right. Now let's get the word. All right. We got, we got prepared in the last <clears throat> lesson. We get the word husband because that's who Yahweh Yahweh is, our husband. Hey, it's G444. Hey, that's mercy right there. With reverence to sex, but we know what sex is, is a joining of a man and a woman, right? So we're going to be joined into our power of a male, of a husband, of a betrothed or future husband. That's Yahweh Shemashai. We're going to be married unto him. It's already written. But who's going to be married unto him? The elect, New Jerusalem. This is with reverence to age to di distinguish an adult male from a boy. This is used generically of a group of both you know, men and women. But that, that's going into the elect because it's going to be both men and women that are going to be delivered. But the men preferably are that wife as a whole, as a collective. We are that wife. We are that bride. 
because we're the ones being decked out, being beautiful. We're the ones that everybody sees because all women are not to be seen there in the house. They're attending to our children. If we, if you have them, they're attending unto our household. OK, but we're out there in the open. We're being seen. The men of the Lord. And where has that bride adorned for her husband that's in the, uh, that's going to go into the, the wedding chamber with our Lord, which is the chariot, the fathership. But at this time, we're being bathed in oil. We're, we're preparing ourselves. We're being matured to our Lord's liking. All right. Um, let's get that word out. The master's use. Bear with me, brothers, to like it. Bear with me, brothers. This phone is going slow. Come on, phone in. All right. Masters uh, use. All right, so it didn't come up, but let's get it. Uh, use. Oh, good for him. All right, so we can find it. Oh, man. Philippians 1 and 6. Be in confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Mashiach. That's us waiting for the wedding day. The day Yahweh Shai returns is the wedding day it's indeed. All right. All right, bear with me, brothers. Or is when we can find it. Bear with me. Bear with me. I always forget where it is. I'm not even sure even what book it's in. I know it's in the New Testament and it may be in the letters. It has to be in the letters of Paul. I forget where exactly it is, but it's all good. So I like you for the noise. You know, I'm parked, I'm chilling. Oh, there we ooh, there it is. You know, but hey, we're gonna bring it out regardless. Second Timothy 2 and 21. And if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Woo! There we go. There it is. Praise the Lord. Okay. That's it. All right. Now, they was going off a little bit in that blue letter because it pertains to a man. It don't pertain to men and women. Get the fuck out of here. It's bullshit. It's only for men. Men are husbands, not women. All right. A husband, man, is a farmer. A woman ain't that. She's the land. All right. So that's all bullshit. But, hey, it's all good. We know what it is. You can't fool us, devil, demon. Show your ass out of here, clown, punk. All right. So um, a few more things. Ooh, let me get uh, what Judas said. You know, are, are great at all times. And we, we we are beautified at this time. Praise you the Lord. So Judas 16 and 16. I'm going to play this clip once again. Shalom. <laughs> I love that, man. I love that. The, the music and everything. You know, it's real, real heavenly, you know. But it was it was dope is that they both dressed 
somewhat alike. And she's just, she looks just like uh, the king. And I like how they were under that sheet, how they was kind of hidden at first. Nobody knew, uh, you know, didn't couldn't see him or her until they rose. So when we rise with the Lord and the Lord is revealed on his day, oh man, everybody's going to see us. All nations are going to behold. All right. The glory, majesty, and honor and love that the Lord has for his people, beginning with his men and his elect, that house of David, the beloved, and that household of faith. So with that, I'm going to read this scripture and close out. This is Judah 16 and 16. For all sacrifices too little for a sweet savor unto thee, but the ultimate sacrifice that was acceptable in the sight of the Father was the death of his son, that we may have a life through his son. Let me get that real quick. Uh, life bear with me brothers mm, first john 5 and 11 and this is the record that yahweh gave of his uh have given to us and this is the record that yahweh hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son <laughs> did not the lord give us to yahweh shai it's just like you've been betrothed you're the the, the the woman is always given to that man marriage is a beautiful thing i don't you women of this age are bug the hell out if you don't appreciate marriage man it's so dope it's tight it's beautiful as hell man us being married unto our god that 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 sets us apart from every other nation and and we walk in it we boast in y'all about Shemel Shai that he going to be married unto us again. Yeah, we're, we're broken hearted and, and through, but we know we're going to be with him again. He's going to be one with his servants again. All right. Hereby perceive we the love of Yahweh because he laid down his life for us. Hereby we perceive the love of God. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai because Yahweh sent Yahweh Shai his son, his express image to die for us, to bring us back into his good graces to be one with him again. Is because he had, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Ooh. Uh, the brotherhood. All right, now this is Judah sixteen sixteen, for all sacrifices too little. For a sweet savor unto thee, and all the fat is not sufficient for thy burnt offering. But he that feareth the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is great at all times. Okay, well, let me see this. First Peter 2 and 17, honor all men, the men of the Lord. All right, noble men, honorable men, warriors of Yahweh Shai, of the nation of Israel. Because we ain't honoring all men. Yeah, you probably heard me talk about that purple guy, but ain't no honor for him. The hell with that dude, lest he change his ways. We're going to honor great men, true men, real men. The apostles and elders are great millstone and all brothers that are associated with them and are affiliated with them. Always men of class and, and, and honor and nobility. We look for justice, order, and peace. All right? These are faithful men. All right? Honorable men, grounded men, godly men. So honor all men. Love the brotherhood. We already know where that is, where it lies. Fear Yahweh. Honor the king. The king is Yahweh Shai. Fear Yahweh, the heavenly father, which I've made Yahweh Shai to be great. To be placed above all things. All right. Honor all men, the men that love Yahweh Shai, that honor one another, that ultimately honor Yahweh Shai, and love the brotherhood. Because every man is going to love the next brother as himself. Okay. Now, this is, uh, let's go to the Apocrypha, ended on this scripture in the book of the Maccabees. I believe it's uh, 2 Maccabees 7. Yep. Second Maccabees 7 and 33. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while, and he was, 
I'll tell you how Yahweh came on the scene and the Lord was still a little bit more angry with us because we went into slavery. But through Yahweh Shai, his, his wrath was appeased. It was uh, subsided. All right. The flame was put out, so to speak. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. And with that, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Al Shai, Bashim, Rakah Kadash, by whom we do function, double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect, that house of David. To your brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, keep it up. To your sisters doing that which is becoming of women, Shalom. And to those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say, Shalom. I was willing to have been edified until the next time I say, Shalom. And I have a blessed day. All right. Yawam ha kaparium. All right. Give your all unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Let your essence be of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash. And with that, Shalom. On to the next one. Shalom.